Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters. Uh, happy Father's Day. I'm also uh, honored and humbled to be a father like you. And for today, um, we can start with Galatians 4, verse 4 to 7. But when the time set had fully come, God sent His Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Because you are His sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, the Spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you know, are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are His child, He made you an heir. The above verses shows us that we have become God's sons or God's children. Being grateful is wonderful and appropriate. I'm not saying it is wrong. It is good to be grateful and wonderful. But there is something much more because we are sons. We are not slave or an employ, uh, employee or a servant who has to be always grateful. There's much more awesome than that. A son or a daughter is always loved by the father, and something more is expected. Gratitude is only one component of being a child of God. What I'm saying is we have to go beyond gratitude because it is incomplete. But wait a minute. Who is this God, and why should we love him? I mean, and why does he call himself father? You know? In 1989, an 8.2 earthquake almost flattened Armenia, killing 30,000 people in less than four minutes. In the midst of the devastation and chaos, a father rushed to the school and saw the school flat as a pancake. After the shock, the father remembered his promise to his son. No matter what, I will always be there for you. And tears began to fill his eyes as he looked at the pile of debris. He remembered his son's classroom at the back corner of the building and started to dig. Other parents just wailed. They said, oh no, it's too late. They're dead. You can't help. Go home. Come on, face reality. There's nothing you can do. You're just going to make things worse. To which parent he responded, are you going to help me now? The fire chief showed up. He said, hey, there's fires out, breaking everywhere, explosions, you're endangering yourself, go home and we'll, we'll take care of it. The father said, will you help me now? The police came, hey, you're angry, you're distraught, it's over, you're endangering others, go home. He replied, are you going to help me now? Courageously, he proceeded because he needed to know for himself. He began digging, 8 hours, 12 hours. 24 hours, 36 hours. In the 38th hour, he pulled, back, he pulled back a boulder and heard his son's voice. He screamed his son's name. Armand, he heard. Dad, the, dad, the boy said, it's me. Dad, I told the other kids not to worry. I told them if you were alive, you'd save me. And when you save me, they'd be saved. You promised no matter what, I'll always be there for you. You did it, Dad. What's going on there? Dad, there are 14 of us left out of 33. Moments later, the dad was helping his son, Armand, and 13 other frightened, hungry, thirsty boys. And the father lovingly carried his son home to his mother. When the townspeople asked, the dad said, explained, I promised my son, no matter what, I'll be there for you. 1 John 4 verse 9 says, This is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. You see, the father in the story really loves his child. Really would dedicate and remember his child and he wants to know if he's dead or alive and so he did what he did 38 hours same as with our father happy father's day verse 14 as we have seen and testified 
that the Father has sent His Son. The word, the Father has sent His Son. The Father has sent His Son means it came from the Father. For God so loved the world before Christ can come, God sent, the Father sent us. It means God loves us. Grace then is not merely kindness to the sinners, no, to us. Grace is a action of love. Love is an action. It's not a reaction. In fact, love comes first. He gives life and being as a free gift. Love comes first. What do you think powered or propelled the father to save his son? Love. Everything we are, everything we hope to be, quoting from one theologian, Mike Morrison, is a gift from him. He has given us life, given us consciousness, given us the ability to be happy, given us personal identity and freedom. And our appropriate response is not just to send him thank you cards or say, thank you God, I love you. That is not wrong. That is indeed important, but that is incomplete. Our identity in him, we are the children of the king. Imagine receiving a ticket, traffic ticket, and then you are pardoned. You'll be happy. Imagine Bill Gates giving you a billion dollars. You live in his mansion. You are set for life. You don't work, want to work. You are happy. You were forgiven your sins. You live in heaven forever. But notice, you are the son. You are the daughter of the king. You own the whole country. Not the whole country. King of kings. You are the daughter and son of the emperor of the universe. That makes a difference. Being a son and a daughter. Salvation is only part of his love. Salvation Heaven is only part of being God's Son. John 17, 23. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you... Who sent Jesus? Who sent Jesus? God the Father. The Father sent Him. And have loved what? Loved you as we, He loves His Son. Wait a minute, you mean He loves us like His Son? When you and I came into the world, we had a big question mark in our heads, don't you? What is my value? Who am I? What am I worth? Unless you know your identity in Christ, you'll always ask, who am I? God could say, here's the answer, you have bought with a, been bought with a price. I am the one who bought you. What I paid for you is Jesus. Isn't that response biblical? Then would it be accurate to say to God, you are equal value to Jesus? It almost sounds blasphemous, isn't it? But I want to assure you that your heavenly Father treasures you as He treasures His Son. 1 John 3 verse 1. See what great love the Father has lavished us, that we will be called children of God. And that is what we are. Who are we? Children. Thank you. Who are we? Children. <coughs> Happy Father's Day. This verse shows that the, very, the Father is very real and He loves us. I heard a lot of sermons about Jesus, you know, about how He loves us. But then I also started wondering who God the Father is. Now I'm beginning to understand that God the Father really loves us and is overwhelmed with joy. His love for His Son overflows to you and to me. His love for His Son overflows to you and to me. To the whole world. For God so loved the world. In fact, I can know the Father as my Father. Happy Father's Day. Now, John 17, 25 says, Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know you that you sent me. I have made you known to them, and will continue to make you known in order that you love 
that you have loved me as or that you love me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. But let's look at verse 26. I have made you known to them and I will continue to make you known in order that your love will be known. Remember the story of Armand? When the earthquake shook, every kid was terrified. What said Armand? My father will find me. My father, no matter what, my father will save me. And what did he say? Classmates, don't worry. My father will save me, will find me. Thirteen kids followed him. They grew up, went into him, and they were saved. Because of what? Because Armand believed his father can save him. At that moment in crisis, that saved the other kids didn't remember anything about what their father said. They were afraid, they were in confusion. But because of one person, Armand, he said, My father will save me. Come. And they came. And so it's the same with Christ. Jesus shares his sonship with us and is trying to show who the Father is. If you don't know who God the Father is, Jesus will show you who He is. The Son is the image of the invisible God. Colossians 1.15 The radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being. Hebrews 1.3 Let's go to John 14.9, please. Thank you. John 14.9 says, okay, that anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Okay, it's right. Uh, John 49. Don't worry about it. Okay. In John 1, 1, remember? God and the Word. And the Word was made flesh. Who was the Word? Jesus Christ. So the Word is trying to make Himself, is trying to tell us who God the Father is. Jesus is the Word. So now that we know, this is another question that will come up. Now that you know, what should you do? Hey, it's important, you know, that we know. And what should I do now? In John 5, 19 to 20. Thank you, Otto. I give you lots of scriptures to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to scramble. Thank you. Jesus gave the answer. What should I do now? Now that I know that I am a son of God. I think there should, I should do something, right? Jesus told them, very truly I tell you, the son can do nothing of himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and show him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than this so that you will be amazed. The, the son is just looking at the father, gazing on him and seeing what the father does. Well, verse 30, please. By myself I can do nothing. I just I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just, for I seek not to please myself but him who sent me. You know when when we were little kids, we learn a lot from our parents, don't we? Elders and adults around us, we copy them, we act like them, and now some of your young adults, adults, we sometimes have similar patterns. I believe it is the same thing with our father, that he just looks at his father and sees what he does and start doing the things his father does out of love. You see, God the Father really wants to know who he is. The Father wants to know who he is. You know one of the most challenging scriptures in the Bible? The, when the judgment came, the goats and the sheep were being judged. And the goats and the sheep, both of them were, you know, we're doing miracles, we're doing works. What did the, the father say? I do not know you. Why? Because they didn't give him a chance to get to know him. That was their mistake. I do not know you. Do you want to be an orphan? You know what's worse than an orphan? A pretending orphan. Oh yeah, a pretending orphan. A blind orphan, a lost orphan, a lost son. 
He is he or she is to be pitied because he or she has a parent and don't recognize it. This Father's Day, get to know your real dad. Happy Father's Day. Who is he really? What does he want to do? Don't be like the prodigal son. Okay? I will give you an example for we have some time. What we must not do. This is one thing that we must not do. In Luke 15 verse 20, you will see. See that this prodigal son, as the pastor Tikat said, was he, when he came back, verse 20 to 21, so he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son and threw his arms around him and kissed him. See? Verse 21. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned. I have made lots of mistakes. I have lied. I have killed. I have murdered. I had lustful thoughts. I had pride. I cheat on my taxes. I love other people. I'm, you know, I'm no worth it. I am no longer what? Your son. You see, the problem is, he was a son. He thought he became a servant when he made wrong things. Don't judge yourself by what you do, right or wrong. You are not a judge. When he made wrong things, he thought he was a servant. He was not anymore a son. Is he a son or a servant? He's a son. Once a son, always a son. Once a daughter, always a daughter. And so they began to celebrate. For the father loved him. He did what was wrong. Don't judge yourself by what you do, right or wrong. Don't be like this. I call this parable the parable of the lost two sons. Let's go to verse uh, 28. Thank you. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded him, with him. Verse 29. But, his, but he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been slaving for you. I go to missions. I attend church Bible studies. I praise and worship. I feed the poor. I feed the hungry. I have never disobeyed your orders. I have loved you. I have attended church. I have kept the tithes. I have kept the laws. Everything. I am perfect. You never gave me even one thing. But when this son of yours, verse 30, has squandered the property with prostitutes, come home, you killed the fattened calf. What was the response of the dad? Verse 31. My, my, my son, daughter, he forgot that he was the son, whether he does things right or wrong. He judged himself by what he did. And that was my problem too. I judged myself by what I did. I am a pendulum. Sometimes I'm a prodigal son. Sometimes I'm an elder son. And I, I judge myself by what I do. But I just want to forget about this and realize I am your son. He loved us when we were yet sinners. We don't need to impress God. He had loved us when we were at the, our worst, He loved us when we were at our best. Do you need to impress God? Do you need to impress God? No. We are His Son. Rest in Him. Believe in that you are His Son. That's why, that's the difference between Armand, when his father said, no matter what, I will be with you, I will be there for you. He knew he would be saved. He knew no matter what, his father will come for him. Under the rubble of the earthquake, all the piles, all the boulders, all those, all those stuff, he knew somewhere, somehow, he would reach down and pull him out. That saved him. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Happy Father's Day. Sonship is not gained by what we do, but rather it is given. It is given by the Father. It is who we are. You see this word? What does it stand for? Loser, right? <laughs> no, people are. But this word has no new meaning for me when I see this word. Two words. Live 
loved. Live loved. Live loved by your father. Who is your daddy? Who is your father? Do you know? Do you want to know? If you have a problem knowing, there's Jesus. He'll show you the way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Who is your daddy? Who is your father? This Father Day, please get to know your dad.